and welcome back to the Reapers. So today we're flying in the F-15 Sea Eagle um, and we're going to be looking at navigation between waypoints and then ILS landing in bad weather. Just to talk about the plane and the navigation modes that it has. Now this is a what they call a Flaming Cliffs 3 plane so it's a low fidelity model so although we can see loads of knobs and stuff like this around here uh, loads of different panels most of it is not interactive uh, most of it is kind of passive only it gives us information but we can't click on things like you can in the high fidelity models like the f5 the black shark all the other you know a10c hornet stuff like that all those other ones okay uh, so Tacan, the real F-15C may have Tacan. I don't, I'm not sure, but this FC3 version that we have does not have Tacan. It for navigation, uh, not including the landing, just general navigations. It uses a waypoint-based INS system. Um, it's not interactable through. Uh, let me get my cursor key up, which you can do with left alt C. Um, it's not interactable again through here. We're going to interact through the waypoint system through the HUD here. Okay. Um, and it's going to be similar with the ILS. Um, now let's look at the three different uh, tools, if you like, that we're going to be looking at today to go through the waypoint navigation and the ILS. So we've got down here the HSI, is uh, pretty conventional and uh, similar in most relatively modern aircraft. Um, it's essentially, if you like, a compass really, but it includes information added onto that compass, things like headings to go to, course lines, deviation lines, and stuff like that. So it, this can help us navigate. We've got the ADI here, the Artificial Horizon, which has uh, guidelines on it, localizer lines and glide slope, glide slope lines. That's going to help us as well. And we have the HUD here, uh, which, if you like, um, combines both of these. Um, onto onto here and we get various information that we can read from the hut okay so before we go on to the actual actual going through the tutorial let's just look at have a look at the keys it's one thing I like to do nowadays because um, it's all, all well explaining this but if you don't know the keys it's no good first of all navigation modes and it's bound as the one key I think from standard so if we just remember that secondly is a uh, next waypoint uh, and thirdly is previous waypoints I've set them to brackets keys left and right so you can uh, cycle through waypoints and cycle through airfields okay and another one uh, let me just go and find it HUD color right control and H so if you're in a mission like this uh, where we've got complete whiteout uh, it's really hard to see the HUD so I like to change uh, the HUD color to a different HUD um, so we can see it as best we can throughout the movie it's probably going to be hard to see this HUD against the white backdrop uh, but uh, that's just how it is okay uh, let's talk about what the different um, navigation modes are for so uh, we've got our INS based waypoint system for navigating for uh, general navigation around the world basically um, what we call long range navigation and then we've got something called ILS and that's purely for uh, landing on an airfield so an ILS generally I say is for when you're once you've reached 10 miles outside of the airport you switch to your ILS and your ILS will take you into the airport now the ILS is only really used uh, generally uh, if you're in bad visibility and that's what we've got here we've got complete whiteout okay from about 4,000 feet down to just about 50 feet or 100 feet above the runway so it's completely impossible to land this with your eyes which you would do on a normal clear day but now we're going to be completely dependent on the ILS system for once we're within about 10 miles of the runway. A bit of general information for how it works. So the waypoint based INS system um, works with an INS system that's on board this aircraft. I believe it's gyro based, someone may need to correct me that with that. But as far as I'm aware, so then the waypoint system is not reaching out uh, with any radio frequencies to any transmitters anywhere. It's all based on the aircraft with pre programmed waypoints from when we've been on the ground. The ILS system is different. The ILS system will handshake and communicate with ground based transmitters on the ground at the airport. Uh, uh, so for instance if we've got this airport that we're interested in today the first thing is we go on f10 map here we can click on it and we can see that it does indeed support ILS because we can scroll down here and we can see that it's INS as two different runways one is you know that direction one is that direction and each different runway has a uh, a different ILS frequency now we're not interested in the frequency today because our FC3 plane doesn't uh, uh, allow us to type in the frequency it's going to do it all automatically for us all we're interested in saying seeing is that this airport here does support ILS because we've got the frequency here okay and um, just as I was explaining the ILS system works out works by handshaking and communicating with a ground based tracking system that's at this airport uh, so if you find that this system does not work on some airports it's because that airport does not support 
ILS. Right, so let's look at the flight plan for today. So here's my F-15. Um, we are essentially at waypoint zero here. Uh, this is waypoint one, about 15 miles uh, uh, southeast. Then we go east about 10 miles to waypoint two. These two waypoints were programmed into the F-15 on the ground essentially, i.e. I did them in the mission editor, I added them in. Uh, then our next step of the journey is going to be this step here. Now this is not a waypoint that I've programmed in. Uh, this is going to be, I don't actually know the real name of it, but I'm going to call it a final point. So once, basically we're going to use our INS system, waypoint system, to traverse to one, then to two, and then we're and then at two it's going to automatically turn on our ILS our ILS system is then going to handshake with the airfield here and it's going to uh, guide us to this point here so it's not going to guide us directly to the airfield it's going to guide us to this point here to ensure that not only we're going to go to get to the airfield but we're going to get to it on the correct course uh, which is very important and then the ILS will guide us through the clouds uh, using uh, using the system to take us down onto the runway at the very last minute we should see the runway and hopefully not crash and die we hopefully should be able to land so before we kick off to so some absolute very basics of my understanding of, sort of navigation so once I'm here I'm at roughly at waypoint zero uh, waypoint zero and it's gonna want to admit uh, take me to waypoint one um, so it's gonna give me a, a heading and that's basically from where I am at that particular moment uh, an angle to um, waypoint one if we look at the top of the screen um, there you can see that's about one four zero okay uh, but as well as that is it, we're interested in something called a course okay so as well as being able to get to waypoint one we will want to follow the course to waypoint one and the course essentially is this dotted line okay so for instance if I happen to be here at the moment um, then it would give me a heading from here to waypoint one and that's great but i wouldn't be following the course which is that dotted line so there's two elements we're looking at here we're interested in getting heading to waypoint one and following the course and that might be for various reasons maybe you've got to follow this course because it takes you between some towns and you have to avoid noise pollution or maybe you have to drop some bombs on the way and therefore you're following that course you know you get my point and this stuff is all kind of new to me at the moment. I'm only just learning navigation, so I'm a complete noob. So correct me where I'm wrong, but this is my understanding of it. Okay, now let's go and look at the flying of it. So we're going to unpause. I should say at this point, altitude, we're not really interested in altitude. These particular waypoints with the F-15, as far as I'm aware, are non-altitude specific. So we could be at 50 feet above the ground or 50,000 feet, it doesn't matter. We're just really working in two dimensions, if you like, X and Y. We're not interested in the Z, in the height, okay? So let's head on. So let's have a look at um, our instruments. So first of all, we've got information displayed up here on the HUD. Uh, let's start going through that. So first of all, we've got information down here. First of all, it's telling us that we're in nav mode. Now, if we were in a different mode, we could be in a, a fighting or a missile mode or a BVR mode, something like that. Then all we need to do to get back to, na uh, to nav mode is to press one. OK, uh, now at this point, it's, in it's just interesting to point out if we unpause that we can cycle between different nav modes. So let's press one again and you can see it's put us to our ILS, ILS system. If we press one again back to nav mode uh, now be careful when you get back to nav mode like I've just done be careful it doesn't select uh, an incorrect waypoint which it has done here is the waypoint display here it's put us back to zero it does that sometimes when, when you do when you mess around with this stuff so that's fine so we use I'm gonna use my bracket keys that I showed you earlier to navigate cycle to the different waypoints so I'm gonna cycle back to waypoint one um, just for interest I can show you cycling all the way through so that's waypoint we're back on waypoint one now okay um, and then this line here is our distance uh, to the waypoint. It's telling us that there is 11 miles from us to the waypoint. And here is a rough estimation in minutes of how long it's going to take to get that to that waypoint from your current position. So that's that, okay? Up here on the heading ribbon, um, that uh, little upside down V is where our current location is on the heading ribbon. Uh, sorry, our current heading is on the heading ribbon. Uh, this little tick down here is uh, the heading from us to the waypoint and if I uh, took myself purposefully away you can see that it's now going to essentially tell us to go left to get to that heading and um, if we if the heading uh, marker goes off of the screen like it's done then it just sits on the left here uh, so it's easy to, for you to tell whether you have to turn left or right to get to it 
Okay, um, this is the ADI. This is has our localizer and uh, glide slope instruments. Now we're only interested in ILS, i.e. when we get within about 10 miles. So we're not interested in that. We are interested in HSI. Um, now, for instance, what if your HUD fails? Uh, then you're gonna have to go to instrument only or your backup instrument, which is this. Um, so if you like, the HSI is in a way uh, giving you the same information as you've got on the HUD there. Uh, one thing I missed on the HUD is our course deviation line. Uh, so this line here is showing our course line deviation. Remember, we're not just interested in getting to that waypoint, we're interested in traveling along that dotted line, which is the course. And this is our course deviation line here. It's telling us that we are currently right of the course. Um, if that um, deviation line was in the center on our flight vector there and holding in the center, then we would know that we're on our correct course line, which is that, remember that dotted line from the map. And we've got the same thing um, simulated down here, okay? Okay, um, so what we've got is a HSI, uh, there is our range to our selected waypoint, waypoint one. Here is our course line. Um, now that course line, remember, is that first dotted line. It happens to be at 138 um, uh, degrees. Here is our course deviation line. That's this long line here. It's currently relatively close to us. So that's good. What I'll do in a minute is I'll purposefully put us way off course just to show you uh, what happens when we do that. Um, and here, the little number two, uh, so one yeah, that is where we're heading at the moment. Two, this arrow is showing the direction of uh, the heading to the selected waypoint. So that is gonna take us to waypoint one. So what we want to do is turn left and ensure that number two marries with number one. And two in the square is the back end of the um of the heading indication uh, line okay so if i go to map quickly why don't we go off course on purpose so what i'm going to do is take myself and i'm just going to fly south here to take myself off this course line on purpose and we can see then how we can use the instruments to correct back onto the course line so stand by right so we're going to fly 180 or even maybe further further off course just give it a couple of miles put my burners on to hurry up and what we'll start to see on here is our course line. Uh, I didn't describe this very earlier. Our course line is actually this little thin arrow here, okay? This is our course deviation line. This one here is telling us how uh, that we that we need to pull this direction, chase this course deviation line to get back to the course line. The course line is actually here. And you can see that the course line is separating from a heading um, direction which takes us to the waypoint that means we're moving off course if this course line married up with this heading line here of number two sorry this heading uh, 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 indicated here that means we would be on course so now we've gone off course we're going to use and this is again simulated up here there's our course deviation line and our uh, heading to the waypoint is there but we're going to use this old-fashioned instrument i actually prefer it a lot I'm getting used to using it now. So we're going to basically try and get back on course as well as getting to our heading uh, to our waypoint, which is now 8.6 miles away. So just going to turn back fairly steeply. So we're going to purposely go back past the heading to waypoint two because we're going to chase this course deviation line here. Um, that's that's an instrument that's telling us how to get back to our course. And again, we could do this in the hard, but we're going to do it on this because it's more fun. Um, so we're going to chase this heading uh, deviation line and you can see the course line here and the heading line to waypoint are going to start to marry up and this deviation line is going to start to close up on us we are the cross in the middle essentially and we're going to start neutralizing this turn it looks like we're going to go over too much and you can see i've gone over it so we are now going to put ourselves to the right and try and get back on course we're going to chase that line until we can centralize it and start heading left. It can get a bit wiggly, and we're gonna be doing exactly the same kind of thing when we get near our approach with our ILS system. Okay, doing a little bit of wiggling, tiny bit to the right now, and then what we'll do in a second, once we've married all of the course deviation line up, the course line, and the heading to the waypoint, then, and we've got a, <laughs> the fun thing is, now we've done all this, we need to then um, uh, turn on to our heading, and, um, ah, now interestingly, um, uh, without noticing, you see, we've done a fairly good job there. Um, we got, uh, the problem is that we were doing a good job. We were getting uh, onto the course, but we've run out of time, basically. We're now 0.3 miles away from the waypoint. If that was longer, we would have had more time to get on that course. Um, so we've, uh, but it showed you the idea of what we were trying to do. And if you like, we'll do it again with this one coming at this next waypoint coming up. So we're about to trip the waypoint. 
You saw we got all the way down to naught miles, which means we went over that waypoint. Remember, it's a two-dimensional waypoint, so it can be at any altitude. And it's now automatically selected to two. So that, that's automatically selected to two. Or if you'd liked, if it hadn't auto-selected, we could have cycled it as we discussed before. Uh, now, uh, we're going to go through exactly the same thing. Um, so instead of going off course on purpose, why don't we try doing this one correctly from the start? And so we're going to turn left immediately. We don't want to go too far off course, so we're going to turn immediately. And what we want to do is get everything to marry up point one, point two, and the course line. So we're just going to go left at just a touch because I just want to bring that course line in, that course deviation line. Just a little bit. Okay, that's coming in now. And now, as soon as that's going to hit us, that course deviation deviation line hit us, which is now. Uh, we now want to turn right, we're on course, and we now want to turn to our heading, which we can do by getting that tick there on the hard, or uh, turning onto the HSR heading. And we're pretty good there, so let's just pause that. Uh, we've got everything pretty well lined up. We've got one, which is basically the 12 o'clock of our aeroplane. Two, uh, the two marker is hidden underneath the one, exactly where we want it. The course marker is there, married up with the two and the one, and the deviation line is as near as damn it, smack bang in the middle. So we know that we're now perfectly on, well actually we're ever so slightly out, but we're pretty damn close to our course line and we're heading for number two. Uh, so that's how those instruments work. It's quite nice having this thing on F10, I didn't know that existed. Uh, okay, so we can deviate a tiny bit to the right to get it perfect, so why don't we do that, let's unpause. And why don't we switch to the HUD for a while. So look at our course deviation line in the middle, that little line there. And we're going to marry that up, and we're going to marry these two up here. It's never easy, is it? So we're going to go right slightly all the time, looking at our distance there, 6.2 miles. Uh, right, uh, now we can try turning on to heading. Hopefully our course deviation line is going to follow us. And it is. Let's see how well we did that time. Uh, oh, look, not bad. You can see that we're almost pixel perfect on that line, and that's about as close as you're going to fly, you know, realistically. We're not uh, computers at the end of the day. Uh, if you had an automated, an autopilot system turned on, then it would obviously follow absolutely perfectly. Right, I'm just thinking what else I need to talk. So we've talked about the instruments. We've talked about uh, this here. So we're going to get to waypoint two now with our INS system. And as soon as we hit waypoint two, what we're going to find is that it's going to switch to our ILS system because it, it recognizes that we're near a runway that, uh, uh, and it's going to uh, assume that at the end of our uh, series of waypoints we want to land. Okay, That's a fair assumption. If it didn't do that for whatever reason, then we can uh, select um, I, the ILS system by pressing 1 on, uh, and do it that way. So we can do it manually or automatically. So we're about to hit the waypoint, 0.1 and 0 miles and switch. So. Uh, so it's done just as we thought our plans. We've gone to waypoint one, we've gone to waypoint two, we've hit waypoint two, and it's now going to take us into mineral um, body for landing. So like I said, first thing is it's going to take us to this, our final point here, and then turn us in. Then we'll switch to ISS, uh, ILS, and we'll go in for the landing. Okay. So let's just get on with that altitude at this moment. I, you know, I'm not a real pilot. I'm, I'm I don't know. But um, uh, as far as I'm aware, at this point, the altitude doesn't really matter. We're not in a pattern for landing, as far as I'm aware at this point. Um, okay, so uh, we've got to chase the line, which is taking us out. Ah, oh, right. <laughs> Now it does this sometimes, so don't ask me why, uh, but it has put us into ILM, but it's chosen the wrong airport. I don't know how it makes its decision about which airport it's chosen, but it's chosen the wrong one. And we know that because it's chosen one that's 66.6 .6 miles away. And we know that's not our airport, because our airport is, roughly speaking, 20 miles. Uh, I'm not sure if it takes it from the airport or from that final line there. Either way, that's not 66 miles. So as far as I'm aware, it doesn't tell you which airport it's taking you to. It just gives you this... Uh, uh, distance here. If anyone knows how uh, to tell which airport it's going to, then please let me know. That would be nice. Uh, so we're going to unpause here, and we're going to use our bracket keys that I set up earlier to start cycling through airports. So there's one at 32, um, 32 miles. And how does that sound? Are we 32 miles away? No, I suspect that's going to be now check. So let's keep cycling. And there's one at 10 miles. I think that is our baby uh, from us to that final point is 10 miles. Yep, so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, it says we've got two minutes to get there, we'll tell we're, that we're in ILS mode, and all the same functionality is gonna be um, as we were looking at before, course line, 
uh, course deviation line, uh, the heading to the waypoint. We're still not interested in the ILS at this moment. We're a little far out for that. And our HUD, com our HUD uh, stuff. Uh, at this point, we can start thinking about our speed as well because we are thinking about coming into finals soon. So I want to get down to about 300 knots at this point. I'm going to turn left. Remember, I'm chasing this waypoint tick here. I know it's technically not a waypoint that we're heading to, but it's still going to give us a waypoint yeah, a symbology on the um, HUD, which is useful. So let's just chase that. It's a nice big turn to the left. Uh, because of this big looping turn I've done, it's going to put us off course so we can correct with our, our, our course line symbology as usual. Right, so let's see what we've got. Uh, we've got, um, ah, interestingly, you can see that the course line on here is telling us that we're central. Now, I know that we're not central. And that probably means there isn't actually a course because this isn't a waypoint we're heading to. Um, there's no direct course to it that we're interested in. It is just a point in space. And that's probably why we're getting no uh, course deviation line at this point, okay? All we're interested in is that we need to get to it and that we need 9.3 miles to get to it there. So let's just line that up. So no fancy flying need at this point. We can start losing a bit of altitude now. Roughly 300 knots is going to do us. Interestingly, on the HSI, um, it does have our our, weight, uh, our, um, our two there, uh, our heading, uh, directly under 12 o'clock, which is good. It does actually have a course deviation on the HSI. So maybe the course, so HSI knows something about the course that the, he that the HUD doesn't really know. Either way, it doesn't really matter um, we, uh, yeah, you can see there's no dotted line going to here, so there's no course, and that's why there's no course deviation line. Okay, we just it just wants us to get to that point. That's all it's interested in. Okay, once we get to this point, this final point, and then head to the runway, then there will be course deviation uh, again because we have to be on the right course to get to the runway. So let's start thinking about keeping it clean at this point and losing altitude. Speed is good. HSI is marrying up with. Um, the uh, hard, uh, interestingly, our localizer, if you like, our azimuth um, uh, deviation line on the ADI is working. It's telling us to go straight forward, uh, but I'm not really interested in this. The ADI artificial horizon until we get to the until we start heading towards the runway. Uh, to be honest, I'm more interested in looking at the HUD and um, the HSI. Basically, all three instruments are telling us to do the same thing, which is head in one direction. Okay. Uh, we're one mile to go, and now at this point, I can't see the HUD very well. I'm going to try changing the colour because it may get start getting difficult to see at this point. I think that's the best we're going to get. Okay, well, now, uh, why don't we pause that there? We've got to our point here. Um, if you're wondering why my point is out, it's because I put it on by hand, that red marker. So it was just a guess, okay? But we're here. Uh, so we've now got our 10 mile final to the runway. Okay, it's nine miles, it's, it's near enough, okay? And we've got to start. Uh, following it carefully now so we're still on ILS we're nine miles away we're still going to get our uh, heading point that's going to take us to essentially the middle of the runway or the threshold of the runway uh, now as we're going to start to be interested in our ADI here um, our HSI here will still be accurate the course line the course deviation will still be accurate but at this point it gets harder to follow this uh, HSI find uh, because we're getting close to the runway it's going to start being easier to use the ADI and the final line so let's look at that We've, we're it, going it, to uh, it's going to give us um, our localizer line which is this one here and it's, it's like our heading line if you like but it's not just the heading line uh, it's also although there's no dotted line here there is a course we have to follow so if we trace from us to there that line there is going to be our course to the runway and we must not only head to the runway but we must stay on that course okay and this localizer line here is going to keep us on that course so it's not going to technically keep us facing it sorry it is going to keep us heading towards the runway as well as that is going to keep us on our course because of that it's going to be very active it's going to jump left and right and left and right quite a lot and for a newbie pilot like me or a newbie navigator like me it's going to be a little bit intimidating but we'll be okay in, in at this point it introduces something else a glide slope line as well as um, as well as going uh, azimuth we're interested in the third dimension the Z now and we've got this localizer line that's going to basically do the same thing as the azimuth essentially but um, with a vertical it's going to keep us on a glide slope I believe it's about three degrees um, a, a descent and that's going to uh, and essentially we're going to basically follow that to keep on the vertical glide slope we're going to absolutely rely on that for like, our lives again it's going to be hectic it's going to jump above and below and above and below um, now I get in trouble from the internet viewers at this point because I, uh, I follow my um, uh, this uh, um, wait, uh, come on, glide slope line religiously. Um, a decently trained pilot, i.e., not me, will not do that. He will basically allow himself to sink below it 
um, but he will not chase it up but he can he will chase it down as i understand i'm not a real pilot i'm not trained um as a pilot so i'm just going to do my best i can to follow it it's, it's not going to be great but i'm just showing you uh the best i can as well as that we've got to start thinking about getting ourselves in an absolute um uh, decent altitude see we're not really going to pick this localizer line up unless we're relatively near the glide sub in the first place are we near the glide sub at the moment let's find out we are currently from the threshold nine miles away well at three degrees 10 miles means that we want to be 3,000 feet above the runway okay as 300 feet per one mile out from the runway the runway altitude absolute is as we can see at the top left there 1000 that's 50 feet let's say 1000 feet shall we so uh 1000 so 1000 plus uh 2700 is 3700 tell you what why don't we just say 4000 to, to uh to keep it even we're currently at 6000 um air pressure absolute so we've got to dive as well as getting on our localizer here we've got to dive and get down to about 4,700 we said uh, sorry did we say that no 3,700 we said didn't we oh it's complicated isn't it so this is a bit much for me as you realize I'm probably struggling right so we're gonna level out roughly okay we're completely wrong we've got a left now remember we're using ADI at this point and we're gonna start losing altitude and we've got to start losing speed I'm off the gas now start talking fast because we're gonna have a lot of information pummeled at us shortly so we're going to keep looking left. We're chasing this left localizer, the vertical line on the ADI. And like I said, it's going to jump about all over the place because I'm not a very good pilot, as you all know. Uh, we've also got instruments um, altitude here. And we're, so we can fly completely head down if we want. I'm used to using the HUD, so I'm going to use the HUD a little bit. But I'm also going to use, whoops, gone too far down. Right, so we're about roughly at the right altitude for our distance out. So what I can do, of course I'm in a lovely modern plane with a lovely HUD. What I can do now is just put this vector here, our uh, path vector. Sorry, no, we're a thousand feet too high, my bad. We've got to go another thousand feet down. We're going to go another thousand feet down. Then we're going to get this path vector here, roughly at minus three degrees. Uh, there's minus five degrees, put it at minus three degrees. And that's roughly going to help us pick up the uh, glide slope uh, indicator so sorry about that we're gonna have to dive down again and we can tell the distance from the one we're now five miles we're chewing up our time it's getting ever so desperate so air brake on because we're way too fast about three thousand feet that's about two thousand feet agl at the moment we're going to level that out roughly and hopefully we're going to pick up our glide slope and um, i think we've just picked up our glide slope i can see it moving and stop uh, right so first of all our localizer here is completely wrong i've spent so much time fiddling around that I've gone completely off the localizer so I'm gonna to have to trace that but in on the good side the glide slope is now showing itself it's slightly below me if it's below me I want to chase it down if it's above me people in the know say don't chase it because the glide slope always slopes down it will catch me up as long as I go level okay I've got to start getting super erratic now at this point so stand by I'm gonna preempt my flaps down uh, localizer is still to the right at this point we're complete white out I completely trust in my instruments which I hate doing okay localizer I've actually got that pretty good it's now deviating to the left I'm way above glide slope I've lost the um, I've lost the glide slope indicator I don't know what that beeping means the glide slope is back I've overcompensated I've stalled wow how not to do this gear down our flaps down yes they are Okay, we can rescue this, guys. We've got 1.6 miles to rescue this. I've gone above the glide slope. Come on, get me back on that equal eye on that. Okay, there's a lateral line in place. I'm happy with that now. We're way above the glide slope, it's telling us. We've now got to go down. We're 0.6 miles away from the runway. We can still save this. And there's our runway. Now, can I somehow save this? Plonk. And that's that. Now, that was pretty hairy and pretty ugly. It was my first attempt at doing it, actually, but I just don't have time to do practice attempts at the moment. Um, and it was it was messy. I kept slipping off. Uh, I kept slipping off the localizer, the lateral line. I kept slipping off the glide slope line. But with practice, you would be able to do that. The difficult thing I find is that because you're a complete whiteout, um, <laughs> shut up. Um, that you really struggle. Even with your HUD, you kind of struggle there. So, but essentially, you can fly that entire glide slope just using the ADI here and it will take you down to, if not the threshold of the runway, to the centre of the runway. By which time you'll pick up. Uh, uh, visual on the runway and be able to land 
Right, I can stop talking now. Um, so we've covered a lot of topics. We've covered INS-based uh, uh, waypoint navigation um, and uh, and navigation, long-range navigation, switching between waypoints, and then changing to ILS. How the ILS would take us onto our onto the heading to the, uh, the the final point about 10 miles out from the runway. Then how we're going to switch to our ADI here, how we're going to use our localizer and our glide slope lines to essentially try and find that three degree, three degree glide slope and take us down to the runway. Um, and that's it. You keep trying that and before long you'll be coming in perfectly every time. Simple as that. So go give it a try. I hope that helps. I hope I've missed too much out. And uh, I'll see you.